So um, I'm excited to be back here in August. Uh, I welcome all our guys who have been with us from from very, 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 very long. Nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, six months, two months, three months, who have taken the class again and again. I'm very sure it's been a blessing to your life and it will continue to be because your lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of God's glory. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. I ask tonight I anoint you to teach truth in simple and clear language like Jesus would have done were he physically present. I ask that you anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the explanations I bring. And at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, we're dealing with capturing the picture and enforcing God's design for your marriage. Capturing the picture and enforcing God's design for your marriage. All right, so I began to speak somewhere yesterday in teaching and I explained to them that as far as the earth is now, after the fall of Adam, nothing just happens in a beautiful sense. All right, the fall of man has corrupted the earth so that anything that is not enforced for the will of God, uh, you know, would not, as it were, in the earth today produce a good result. So when you live like a field fallow, or you, you leave a house unoccupied for some time, what happens is destruction sets in. Not because God created destruction or God ordered destruction, but from the day that Adam fell, the natural consequence of abandonment on earth is destruction. All right, the natural consequence of abandoning anything or not making effort about anything becomes destructive. That is part of the result of the fall of Adam. Now, here's the deal. Before we even deal with the question of the fall of Adam, we go all the way back to the beginning under God's original intention. We go all the way back to the beginning under God's original intention. So that before the fall of man, God began to do the things that we want to do tonight. All right. Or what this class would do in your life through this weekend. All right. God began to conceptualize. You can't enforce what you have not pictured. You can't enforce what you have not pictured in your mind. All right, you accept things because you have not caught a different picture. All right, but the moment you catch a picture of what it should be, you can reject and resist what it should not be. The moment you catch a picture of what it should be, you can reject what it should not be. So the first thing is, and you need to note this, is that God does not do anything until he announces the concept of that thing. So God precedes every action by an intention made known. God precedes action by an intention made known. For some of you who have followed for a while, you know, you may come to the point where somebody will say to you, this guy is just indoctrinating you. Don't say no, no, no. Don't resist it. Don't reject it. Yes, indoctrination is going on. But what kind of indoctrination? You are being indoctrinated by the will of God. Why? When we can assess the will of God is when we would be able to live out the will of God. So you have a lot of people who are not paying attention to conceptualize God's thought regarding marriage. So take this against the backdrop of what I said. That nothing happens on earth. You know what science says? That the state of matter will remain the same until a force is applied. Now, that resulted as a consequence of Adam's fall. So your life is not just going to pan out well until you understand to operate in the frequencies of Jehovah. What is the frequency of Jehovah? That he announces what he wants to do so that the picture can be caught, then he will do it. So for text tonight, so it doesn't look like I just came here to say a few things that, you know, have no scriptural reference. Let's go back to the beginning. Genesis chapter number one. Let's go back to the beginnings. Genesis chapter number one. Verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, 
after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Excuse me, sir. You said you want to make the man. You left just the idea of making the man into what the man should do. Why? God, in a sense, was reading his manifesto for the election. He was saying, you know what? I want to make this guy. This is why I want to make him. This is how I want to make him. And this is what I am making him to do. Conceptualize it. Man had not been created here. Man had not been made here. But he put together the concept so that he himself is guided by what he has said. He himself is guided by what he has said. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. Why did he create him in his image? Because he had declared that he would create him in his image. Did you see that? So God's creation followed his declaration. God's creation followed his declaration. Let me say this to you. You will soon get the point in context that if you cannot picture it, you won't create it. If you cannot conceptualize it, you cannot actualize it. This is not just about like a motivational speech to just, you know, uh, play on words. But God does that. That's exactly what he was doing here. Verse 28, verse 27. So God created man in, the, in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Oh my God. You know, I was meditating through this week about this class and about these teachings generally and God began to minister something to my heart some of them will sound so radical to you right now but please let's just focus on the Bible these are not my sayings these are the sayings of the word of God now here's the deal do you realize that God did not introduce the concept of man from an individual perspective isn't that amazing look at the first thing he said here you know when I hear all these teachers and preachers who don't know what they want to say and say to you, you are not born to be married. Hey, go, 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 go. Oh, go, 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 go. I just look at them, something is wrong with you. Hello. Let's leave the fact that, you know, just because people have difficulties in life or bad marriages or some people feel like I waited and nothing is happening, then people come up with theories of forget it. You are not born to be married. Marriage is not your destiny. Blah, blah, blah. Find your life and fulfill it. I was hearing one of them on Instagram this afternoon. I'm like, madam, 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 I know you. You were married before. Don't pick a doctrine just because your marriage failed. You can rather pick the truth of God's restorative power. But don't form a doctrine and confuse and deceive people. The first reference to mankind by God had everything to do with marriage. Male and female created he them. All the references were not to let me make Adam. Then I will make Eve. Let me see if they will fall in love and love each other. No. He conceptualized the idea from the beginning, beginning. Tete. Those of you that made me speak Igala in, in, in the class today. Let me add some more from Tete. From the beginning. You know, this reminds me of um, there's this song they used to sing. Etete domo kwigwele, e domo engini, engano, enga. Hey, Gala is feeling me. <laughs> Say, you've been there from the beginning. You are there today. You'll be there tomorrow. From the beginning of beginnings, let's go back to verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, let them, let them, let them. Let them, let them let them. Aha. Grace, thank you. Let them. Let them. Somebody say them. Let them. God begins to speak beyond the individual. Why? The idea he was about to birth was beyond the individual. Of course, he takes the individual through an individual journey and gets them into them. But don't forget his original intention. 
Why am I saying this? A lot of times when we get this wrong, we get our thinking wrong. When we get our thinking wrong, we get our life wrong. We must put marriage where it belongs. What is the concept that Jehovah had in mind from the beginning? That's where we must put marriage. So it was not an afterthought. I want to show you, it was not an afterthought like some people think. Yeah, man was made first on earth. Or rather, man was, you know, manufactured first on earth. But look at verse 27. God conceptualized and created them the same time. Same day, if there were days in eternity. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. Distinguished creation from the manifestation in Genesis 2. So I jokingly always say that God created them in the realm of the spirit. Molded Adam first. So Eve was in the spirit looking for Adam. So when Eve could not find Adam, we'll go to the other stories. Because <laughs> Adam's spirit had left the realm of the spirit and had materialized on the earth. Why is God running us through this journey? The same thing, God begins to create a picture of their dominion from the beginning, before they were formed. So number one, God gave a picture of their marriage before they were formed. Number two, God gave a picture of their dominion before they were formed. Number three, God gave a picture of their assignment before they were formed. So let me say this to you. You don't have a right to choose to marry or not to choose to marry of your own free will when God ordained it before you came in. What do you need to do is to catch the picture and enforce it. So whether I'm talking to you at 35 or at 40 or at 25 or at 22, what should you be doing right now? You should be asking their Lord God Almighty. I was in a particular class that talked about the picture you have. And you do have a picture for my life. When it comes to number one, marriage, number two, assignment, number three, dominion. Sir, I want to cut the picture because when I lay out of that picture, I'm going to enforce it on this earth. And I happen to have been told that it doesn't matter at what point I cut the picture as far as you are involved. And the person who told me, told me that from your word, that different people actualize their age, their destinies at different ages based on when they cut the picture. For instance, Abraham was a very, very, very elderly man. The kind of people you call uncle. When the Lord God showed him the picture and told him, stand up right now. I know you're married, but you're so lazy and you're still in your father's house, eating his food, drinking his water, paying no rent. Stand up. Go to a land I will show you. And once Abraham laid hold of that picture, he started his journey. What's your journey like? The journey must be in line with God's picture. That journey will make you speak like God. It will make you react like God. It will make you talk like God. It will make you expect like God. It will make you hope like God. It will make you look forward to things like God. That's the picture we're talking about. So God begins to create a picture. Why? God himself moves to his picture. So every time you catch his picture, you're already in his perfect will. Because be sure that for every step you take according to his picture, your feet will land in the same place as his. So in verse 28, And God blessed them. And God said, Oh my God, can you imagine how powerful the picture is? God first of all casted the picture listen to this, before he created them. He announced them. Then he created them. In verse 28, he goes back to bless them using the dictates of the picture. God cannot bless you outside the picture. God will bless you using the picture. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, you can literally match verse 27, 28 and 26. In 26, he declared the picture. In 28, he blessed them to be the picture. 
We'll get into the picture that God has in mind for marriage. Get into the picture. Get into the picture. Get in the picture. So let me put it this way. This is why we don't just choose marriage of our volition. God had blessed them or declared them before they were created. When they were created, he blessed them in terms of a union. Then what did God do? Genesis chapter 2. So God manufactured Adam first. Let me say this to you. This is where I explain to every single person that being single is a phase and a stage. Being single is a phase and a stage. And what do you do with that stage? I'll show you from scripture what God made Adam do with the stage of singlehood. So being single is a phase. Let me say this to you. You are going to be frustrated as a single if you don't catch the picture. Because what's going to happen is there are temptations that come to us as single people that makes it look like we are misplaced. We are not misplaced. We are on a journey if we get the picture. And every time we lay hold of the picture, we are able to assess ourselves on the journey of the picture to know where we are and where we ought to be. So something amazing happened. Something amazing happened. Genesis chapter 2, verse number... 15 and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it where is the woman missing she had not been found on the earth she had not been found on the earth go back to verse 7 of Genesis 2 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Note the difference of the word form and the word create. The word create used in Genesis chapter 1 is to form from nothing as it were. Man was not formed from a material substance when he was created. The substance of his creation was God himself. Because God said, let us make in our image and likeness. So God took a portion of him. That's why we are his children. And created. He didn't need material substance. But because God is spirit and dwells in a realm above this realm. He needed to form a body for man. So he formed the body. So in verse 15, God now put him in a place. Are you getting the picture? So for every man... Where has God placed you? Is the first question you need to ask. If you don't know, you need to pray. Where has he placed you? Now, very often we teach this like only the man needs to know his place. My dear sister, when God was placing Adam in the garden, Eve was still fully resident inside of God. So when you preach to men to find their place, I announce to you your place. If Adam was in Eden, a spot of God's presence on earth, Eve was in the belly of God. Hey, my dear sisters, where are you? This is the picture. This is the picture. The picture is not anxiety. Hey, oh my God, oh my God. Must I go an empty single? Must I go an empty single? Must I go and everything? No, no, no. That's not the picture. Eve was locked up in God Himself. Eve was locked up in God. So we often blame men. Where are you? Is your man in Eden? Is your man in, inside God? Are you sure? Don't marry a man that is not inside God. Thank you. We are finished analyzing men. Where was Eve? Where was Eve? Eve was right inside of God. Don't forget Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. So when the devil tempts you with anxiety, when the devil tempts you with fear, when the devil tempts you, just swim in God. Lord, I'm in you. Cast your cares upon him. 
before he cares for you. And I'm about to show you why I said very clearly that God had control of Eve. So God now said to Adam, all right, verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I keep saying to people, God warned man before the Old Testament. You know, when I talk to people in the New Testament, all these my grace people, I teach grace, the grace of God. If I know the grace of God, none of us will be inside this class. Hello? Hey. All right? But this is before the law of Moses. Because people judge God like the, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament. Which, which God is this one? This is the God of the original intention. Inside his originality, he looked at Adam and said, don't try it. My friend, don't try it. Don't dare this tree. My dear brother, in God's original intention, God will not throw a woman at you without throwing warnings to your life. Why? Until he's able to instruct you, he cannot lead you. Hello? So I said to the sisters, when a man who can't be instructed stands in front of you, show him the way out of your life. He must have the capacity to be instructed. Who can instruct him? And just like the Bible in the book of 1 John, if you don't love God, whom you, if you don't love people that you can see, how do you love God that you cannot see? If you cannot be instructed by human authority that God has placed in your life, you can't be instructed by God. So one of the litmus tests you must see in the life of a man is to see that he is instructable by Jehovah. My brother, are you instructable? When was the last time you did anything in your life that came out of an instruction of God? That's another thing you must watch out for, my dear sisters. That's the picture that God creates for us. He creates the picture of a man so powerful but instructable. He creates the picture of a man that can be led. He creates the picture of a man that can be given instructions and he will keep it. And the Lord God said, God did not say it was not good for him to be alone until he had instructed him. It is good for a man who lacks instruction to be alone. <laughs> I'm sure you got that. It is good for a man who lacks instruction to be alone. Instruction will show in his discretion so that his discretion is able to pick the things that he should pick and reject the things that he should reject. Praise God. And the Lord God said, It's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Some of you have heard me teach this, so I'm just going to repeat some things in, 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 quick, um, in quick mention. Everybody would think, Ah, God says it's not good for Adam to be alone. Next verse. And here comes Eve. It's not good for you to be alone. Verse 19. And God brought Eve unto him and said, Adam, 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 here is your wife. Marry her now. God said it's not good for a man to be alone. The next thing Adam saw was lion. The next thing he saw was monkey. My dear sisters, it's not your fault that you are seeing monkey after God gave you a word. Yes, I know you prayed marital release. You prayed it with your whole heart. Then the next week, one guy that was smelling cigar was trying to toast you. No problem. Just name him monkey. Then the other one came drunk. You pitied yourself. Me, child of God. <laughs> God, I don't suffer. Just name him tortoise. Then another one came. Elephant. Zebra. Genesis 2, 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was none found and helped meet for him. Excuse me, sir. If you are looking for a wife for him, you know where you placed the woman you had produced for him. Why didn't you just bring her? Let me... 
it is God's will to test his man. My dear sister, it is okay to be tested too. If you are Eva, you are in the realm of the spirit. What would you be telling God? Hey, God, do let it not come and choose go to let it not come. And, let me tell you something. Certain things about marriage based on God's picture are not yours to fight for. There are things you hand over to God. Ah, if you know the number of sisters that have told me, but where will I meet himself? How will we meet self? It's not your portion to think about. I'm about to show you how it happens. I'm about to show you how it happens. How will I even know self? How will I? How will I? How will I? Do I need to go to church more? Yeah, do all you can do physically, okay? Uh, do I need to? Yeah, do I need? Do I need? Do I need? Do I need? Oh, calm down now. Unne, calm down. Calm down. Chere, chere. Be cooling down. Eve was nowhere to be found. They were showing her man animals. Don't worry. I know you feel your man is still trapped in Canada. They will deport him because of you in Jesus' name. Now, Joko. <laughs> if you are even in the realm of the spirit, what will you be saying? Where is this guy, Seth? Eh? Where is this guy? You don't even know his name is animals. Rejecting animal option. Rejecting mumu mumu option. Rejecting Abuja babes that don't have sense. <laughs> Woo! Let me say this to you. In God's picture, you approach marriage with total peace in your heart. Why? You know in whom you have believed. I know in whom I have believed. I know who is working out the details of my life. That's God's picture. How about Adam? You know, every time we preach about settling, we talk to women. We don't talk to men. Do you know Adam could have settled? Adam could have said to God, since I can't find any option, let me just, let me just, you know, we can work it out. God, can we reason this matter? You know what God was doing to Adam? God was testing the picture he had given Adam. Because he had given Adam the impression that Adam should walk by. So what did he do? He gave him an assignment that will make him stick to the picture. Can I ask you a question? Are you sticking to the picture? Or you want to give up the picture that you have seen? So God said, you know, now when Adam had passed the test in verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. What's the picture here? I will orchestrate your destiny. You sleep. Now, this is not tautology. This is scripture. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to come on him and he slept. Adam could have rejected the sleep. I am one person who knows how to reject sleep. Me. I know how to reject sleep. I know when sleep is catching you, but you want to do one more post. I know when sleep is catching you, but you want to reply one more person. I know when sleep is catching you, but you want to do one more walk. Adam slept. A state of total peace. A state of total peace. One of the best ways to approach marriage or the best and godly way to approach marriage is to pray yourself into God's peace. Pray yourself into God's peace. And that's why when you are on the wrong path, you will realize that you will struggle for peace and not find it. You will struggle for peace and not find it. You struggle for peace. So, you must be in God's peace. He gave him sleep. He slept it. And what did God do? And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. My dear sisters in the house, who brought Eve to Adam? God. When Eve was formed, the first person she saw was not Adam, it was God. When Eve was formed, the first person she saw was not Adam, it was God. Adam saw God. God held her hand and said, follow me. Don't procure a man for yourself, it's not God's pattern. Don't force a man on yourself, it's not God's pattern. God has plans for you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not alone your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge He and He shall direct and He shall direct 
your power. Trust in who? The Lord. This is the picture. So the Lord God brought the woman unto the man. The Lord God brought the woman unto the man. What's the picture here? I always say to everybody who wants to listen, that orchestration is of the Lord. And until you catch the picture, that orchestration is of the Lord, you will labor in vain. Why? Except the Lord builds a house. The labor in vain that build it. In essence, they can build it, but it will be in labor. In essence, they can build it, but it will be in labor. That means they will build something that looks like a house. But how do I know it's not a house? But because the Bible says they labor in vain. So they will build something that looks like a house. But if their labor is in vain, it means they didn't achieve the house. So it says, except the Lord builds a house, labor in vain that build it. So you see what happens here? So God held our hands. My dear sisters, God will hold your hand and take you to your man. Quote me on that. He will hold your hands. You know, many of you here, I know you followed, you listened, you believed, you keep believing, trusting the Lord. Let me say this to you. Your testimonies will amaze because how your meetings will happen. Even you in a thousand years, you wouldn't have been able to analyze it. You know, I always give this story of Julia getting admission to main campus school, uh, Samaru campus of Amadou Bele University. Imagine somebody studied for the sciences through her secondary school. And she was supposed to be studying pharmacy or something. I can't even remember because the Lord orchestrated, orchestrated her away from whatever it is. Samaru is a big campus. I'm told there are people in Samaru campus of ABU who were born there, schooled there, are professors there, they still don't know the end of the campus. You know, there's this joke that back in the days, the Sardana said, from here till anywhere, just be building the university. I mean, Samaru campus has a dam. Samaru campus has forest. It has, I mean, it has everything. Staff quarters, Senate building, everything is there. But guess what? They hit a big stone in Samaru. They say, nada, you can't stay on this campus. Why? There's a boy in Congo campus. You must marry him. Nothing will stop you from marrying him. If as, as you are talking right now, you are his wife with three children. You can't go anywhere. It's too late. You must marry him. They say, paper, 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 paper. Guess what? They gave the girl form to feel. So in her heart, she said, let her just feel something that when her parents see, They'll say, come back home, write um, the exam next year. <laughs> Celebrate grace. When God is moving, <laughs> even foolishness <laughs> begins to align. The girl filled the form anyhow, but the angel said, no, not so, not so, not so. <laughs> Imagine you went to school to study pharmacy, having met himself, and you ended up in business administration in a different campus. <laughs> so, you know, her scheme failed. The parents say, just do it. Next year, you will go back to, uh, you know, you go back to what you want. So she landed Congo campus, campus on top of, let's just do it. Raga, laga, laga, laga. Zimbro, laga, baba. Hey, when the Lord is moving, <laughs> when the Lord is moving, ra, la, raga, bara, 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 ga. Temporary plans become lifetime goals. <laughs> Reggae, 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 reggae. <laughs> ah, you know, there's this song we used to sing those days. Ah, let me confess. I was a younger chap then, ministering unto the Lord. I just left secondary school and I learned this song. When I want to fall people down during ministration, it's what, it, it used to be my favorite song. Hey, when I want Holy Spirit to knock people, let Him hold you, let Him touch you, let Him be your God. Let him be your God. Ha, ah, that year. I sang that song. Rabalavala. Guess what? God took over. Yeah. First of all, he made us meet. 
We met within that first year, first semester. First year, first semester. It was just normal friendship. Number two, God made her reconsider going to study any farmer guinea. Farmer what? She got in the right fellowship. She got in the right fellowship. I mean, there were many fellowships in school. Both of us could have ended up in any other fellowship. We both came to FCS. <laughs> she just loved it. She just loved the chapel. She just loved FCS. She got friends. And she got a friend. <laughs> Samaru fire. Come and see deleting the Samaru plan. Rala gabara. Zaza zaza. That is how we are here. God can thwart somebody's admission to give her man, to give man, woman. What are you talking about? You know, there are stories upon stories I can share. So God held her hands. Come with me, he said. Come with me. And Eve followed. And here was Adam standing. Let me say this to you. Every time it is God, it is easy. Every time it is God, it is easy. Why? He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God will not put responsibility on you that will drown you. Including the thought and the worry of who will marry me. Say, take no thought what you will eat or drink or what you will put on and I add my own who will I marry? He says, the body not more than and the stomach more than food. He says, look at the lilies of the field. They never sow nor reap. They don't even have social media. They don't belong to a primary class. They don't have any place where they'll say, do you want to make friends? They don't have no type of that. But he says, your heavenly father. Jesus was selective in his words. He wanted you to know that the person we are talking about is your papam. Papam. Igbo people will understand the papam. Igbo people will understand. Atami there. Amy, my own father. Atami, me, my own. So God speaks to you in terms of Abba Father. Your own father. He's not saying, you know, he's not speaking of him as an external force and factor. He's speaking of him as your father. Just feel that surge of peace that comes with him. <laughs> hey! I'm the Lord God. You know, verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. Every time God orchestrates, man understands. Adam instantly knew. There's no confusion here. So when I see some guys, uh -uh, they don't understand God. When I see a lady trying to force a man, they don't understand God. When I see confusion, they are missing God. Adam opened his mouth. No confusion. No debate. Adam didn't bring measuring tape. Let me see your height. See the width of your waist. Let me see your absence. No, Adam knew. The conviction was so deep. Adam began to declare, Bone of my bones and my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam instantly recognized the stock of which she was made. You came out of me. Let me tell you the significance of what Adam did. This is going to make a lot of sense to you now when you put Genesis 1, 26 to 28 together with Genesis 2. What happened? God spoke to them. They formed them in separation. The moment he brought them back together, Genesis 1, 26 to 27, fulfilled itself through the lips of Adam. Adam said, our creation was temporal because our creation was thought of in terms of being together. It was not the favor Adam was doing. He said, hey, where is that girl? God said, they are looking for a husband for you, bro. Come on, let me help you. No. Adam said, aha, we are back together. This was his intention. Before you showed up, he told me, hey, I feel like dancing. 
Before you showed up, he told me, My dear sister, there is no value higher than a man recognizing your place in him through God. No value is higher than that. Recognizing your place in him through God. No value is higher than that. That's the picture. That's the picture. No value is higher than this value I'm talking about. That Adam could look at the woman and find her place without debate. This is your place in me as defined by Jehovah. Nothing. Nothing. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. What is the other picture that God begins to create? Therefore shall a man leave his father. Uh -uh. Adam made their biological father, but he was speaking God's eternal principle for mankind into time. He was saying, you know what? The moment he meets you, recognizes you, knows your place, every other relationship will take the back seat. Every other relationship will take the back seat. Every other relationship will take the back seat. And shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? That's another picture I've not really taken time to speak about in this class. Adam and Eve were open to each other. There was no secret to hide. That's the picture. There was no secret to hide. They were open to each other. Adam and Eve were bare before themselves. That's God's picture. All I have said is the foundation of the marriage. Marriage had not started. This is foundational. This is what we must know. Why must you keep looking? Why must you keep looking at the picture? I'm going to show you why you must keep looking at the picture. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Why must you keep looking at the picture? Like I said, until you focus on the picture, you cannot, you cannot enforce the picture. Why do I use the word enforce? You live in a fallen world, but you are not in a fallen state. So let me explain. Why do you think the police would always go after the bad guys? Because law enforcement must keep order. You are the law enforcement of your empowered by God. Because when the police officer stands on the road and says stop or go, he's not standing there of his own authority. So when you lay hold of the picture, what you do is to become law enforcement that stands to enforce your marital destiny. Let me say something to you. Many of us after tonight are going to pray for the husband we have not yet seen in dimensions we have never prayed. For the wife we have not yet seen in dimensions we have not prayed. Or for the wife we have seen in dimensions we have not yet prayed. Or for the husband we have met in dimensions we have not yet prayed. Why are you an enforcer? Good news, good news. Satan is going to do everything to thwart this destiny. Quote me, because I'm quoting the Second question. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. How is the transformation happening by beholding? You know one of the things all of us must go do? We must go and take away every idea that does not represent the picture that God wants to create in us. We must delete it. How do you delete it? You don't fight negative ideas by yourself. You fight negative ideas by focusing on the picture. Go back to the picture and focus so strong. Go back to scripture and say, oh wow. I'll be gloriously married. Divine orchestration is of the Lord. I just cooperate with the will of the Lord. There are things I don't think about because God's got them covered. There are things I don't worry about because Jehovah is in behind the scene. There are things I don't struggle about because they belong to God. And God does them for me. Why? He's our Father. He is my Father. Papa, Atami. Very important. Let's take another translation. 
Let's see what the Amplifier says. And we all, with unveiled face, that means I come to God hiding nothing. Continually, someone say continually, seen as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? The will of the Lord. All right? Are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory even to more glory which comes from the Lord who is that spirit from one degree of glory to the other let me explain a few things to us tonight your beholding will condition your atmosphere your beholding will condition your atmosphere your beholding we condition your atmosphere. Anywhere Satan has conditioned your atmosphere before it is time to fight. How do you fight? With the glory. With the glory. How? So I'm going to leave you with You are going to wonder. Tell you. How? Romans chapter 4. Ah, Ralabado Kosuto Bara. Hey! Palagabababa. Rekasana. I'm about to show you something so strong. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. <laughs> what do you do with your beholding? What do you do with your thought of marriage? Ah, Baraba. New Living Translation. Romans 4 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. This is the in fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. It grew stronger. Let us see how that happens by reading the other verses surrounding verse 20. Even the, when there was no verse 18, even when there was no Abraham kept hoping. Why did he keep hoping? He kept hoping because he saw a picture. No picture, you will lose hope. That's the world in which we live. Satan is going to challenge your hope. <laughs> Some of us is already challenging it with our past experience. Some of us is challenging it with our family reality. <laughs> you didn't just come from a broken home. You come from a okay home. The difference between broken and brocade. Brocade is eh? the brokenness is special. Mm. They divorce themselves, they are fighting. Empire. Hey. Experiences. Negativity all around. And the Bible says, even when there was no reason. You know, just like when to Believing that he will become the father of many nations, not just a son. What well, the picture he was given was a picture of nations. Do you remember when he told him to count the stars of the earth? Do you remember when he told him to look at the sand on the seashore? God will give you pictures sometimes that your sense cannot carry. It's okay. Your sense can't even carry. Focus on the picture, not your senses. For God had said to him, that's a picture. That's how many it will be. And Abraham's faith did not weaken. Even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him righteous. Let me shock you with something. <laughs> ah! Ah, yeah, yeah. Let me. I saw something recently about Abraham. Ah, you know, let me just quickly see that uh, and show you. Very, very funny. This amazed me when I saw it and I was shocked 
I was short. Go to Genesis chapter 25. Let me wrap this up. <laughs> Woo! Sarah had died. Abraham received a child by miracle with Sarah. But the miracle was so strong. Sarah died. Abraham married again. <laughs> he did not just marry again. He had children. <laughs> when I saw it in scripture, I was laughing. Like, wait, 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 wait. It was a miracle you had your promised child. But what happened? Abraham married another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Haba. Are you seeing what I am saw? Let me speak in the words of Zebudiah, the former, the, 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 the famous comedian in Nigeria those days. Zebrudaya, Chief Zebrudaya. Are you seeing what I am saw? I thought this man received a miracle child at 100. Sarah died. The miracle was so strong. Uncle married again. He did not just marry again. He continued the miracle. Miracle. <laughs> you do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. Oh. It can never ever exist. Oh. According to your knowledge and your will for me, what you said you have done, I just need to align. No. Because you are not a man that changes your mind. No. Those that know you will trust in you, not in horses and chariots. By the arm of flesh, no man can prevail. No man, no man, no man, no man. My covenant is you. What is that for you? Ah, you get the point. So, Papa Abraham was minting children after Sarah died. Somebody whose body was dead before the promise was activated. I came to announce to you, if you hold on to the picture, God will shock the rest of your life. Just hold on to the picture. Take your eyes off the number. Take your eyes off the history. Take your eyes off the circumstances. Take your eyes off it and focus on the picture. Focus on the picture. Focus on the picture. The picture will deliver. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You are a good God. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give him praise, give him glory. Give him praise, give him glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 We give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus.